All right, you asked for it and I'm giving it to you. Today it's all about layering. So recently I did my fragrance storage video and there I had an email address for you to send uh, questions to me that you'd like answered on video. And one of the questions was about layering fragrances. I received uh, many of the uh, questions, but this is the one I decided to do first because it's something that I'm quite interested in and want to learn myself uh, about it and also educate you guys about how to layer fragrances. So if you want to find out about layering fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. If this is your first time tuning into the channel and you love watching fragrance reviews, finding out about new fragrances, discovering new brands, and of course participating in giveaways and still haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So the email address for where you can send me questions is lfsgquestions at gmail.com and there Anytime you have a question that you'd like me to answer, I'm not going to be able to answer every one of these questions, obviously, but ones that I feel I can have enough content to create an actual whole video for, uh, I will create a video like this one and the one I did last week where um, we spoke about uh, you know, storing fragrances and how to store them and all that good stuff. So this is a pretty long video. It's all about layering and it's also layering and uh, my journey with fragrances and layering and then also about uh, some layering combos that I really love that I would want to talk to you guys about. So let's get started. But before we get started, I also want to mention that if you haven't purchased one of these wonderful hats, they are for sale. I'm not wearing it today, but I'm going to put it on right now. Um, so it does say perfume on it, as you can see. And for sale, it's $40 shipped U United States America of America, of course, USA. Uh, any international, it's uh, 45 and uh, I prefer uh, friends and family payments via PayPal, um, but if you prefer to make it as a sale, please add the difference uh, for whatever amount uh, PayPal takes. So manlovescologne at gmail.com is where you send uh, the money, and uh, it's M-A-N-L-O-V-E-S-C-O-L-O-G-N-E at gmail.com, and then also once you make the payment, send me an email that you made the payment and with your address and email address, of course, I'll see that, but, and then I will get it out to you. But it's $40 for USA and then also $45 for international. Anyway, these are really good quality hats, as you can see, and uh, they're available now. So what is, what is it about layering fragrances? So first of all, I want to tell you a little bit about me. Uh, I went through a phase where I was enjoying layering fragrances. Um, after the 90s, I kind of got, bur got burned out by wearing the more intense fragrances and I discovered Jo Malone. And Jo Malone fragrances are more light, kind of almost like solo floors, not many, many notes within the fragrances. They're also eau de cologne, so they don't last a long time. Very fresh and refreshing florals and citruses. Some are deeper than others, but those are ones I discovered and at that time I was layering a lot because those fragrances are very easy to layer and because of that I was doing a lot of layering and the other thing is that the Jo Malone Associates talk you into buying two fragrances and one and um, I like the idea of layering at that time but once I got really heavily into the perfume reviewing and collecting towards the end of the 2000s after I got over the Jo Malone thing I was like I needed more I can't deal with this light fragrances even though I like them don't get me wrong I do like them that's when I thought you know what now I've discovered all these pure really intense fragrances I don't need to do any layering but within the last 10 years I've discovered that layering can be fun and it's easy to do um, if you know something like cooking and recipes and things like that ingredients and of course you'll know a little bit about notes and perfumery and uh, all it takes is to kind of like see what complements one another so what's the deal with layering layering is good for when you want a unique scent that um, uh, you want to wear a fragrance, but you don't want to smell like everybody else, especially when you don't have access to a lot of fragrances, different niche fragrances, and it's mostly designer fragrances, and you can figure out what works when, um, better together, like two different designer fragrances, if that's all you have. Um, you can layer them together to make a unique fragrance so you stand out rather than blend in with everybody wearing the same fragrance. So that's one of the reasons why you'd want to layer, and also depending on your mood and your uh, day, like if you think that a fragrance you have is 
uh, too heavy and you want to lighten it up a little bit and at that time you don't want that intensity because that your mood is feeling like it's too intense then you lighten it up with some fresher notes then um, makes the fragrance a little easier to wear and then also the the reverse you want something more intense but you don't want to overwhelm yourself so that you would uh, kind of like intensify something with um, uh, a woodier note with something like citruses and or florals and things like that. So layering can mean two, layering two different fragrances. Those are what I would recommend. I prefer to do two two fragrances because it's easier that way. Uh, once you get more than two, it becomes a little more complicated and you have to figure out if this one works with that one and if all three work well together. But if you are already doing layering, then you're probably doing layering of three different things or four different things. Uh, and I've done many uh, accidentally because I layer, I don't layer intentionally, but I spray fragrances to test throughout the day. I spray another one on top of that and then and I spray another one and then later on I end up with this cocktail. It's, it smells so amazing that um, I want to figure out how to replicate it. but. Nine out of the ten times I can't figure it out because I've just been spraying so many things on top of one another and so um, uh, that's that story. But um, one of the I find that if you go to like a, let's say a bar and you order a cocktail uh, and you're requesting uh, you know them to eliminate one of the ingredients and replace it with uh, another ingredient, it's kind of sort of like with uh, layering fragrances. You uh, layer complementing notes which is what I, I, I recommend. Um, citruses and florals work well together. Um, rose and uh, woody notes work well together. Rose and patchouli works well together. Oud works well with rose. Rose I find to be very 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 versatile like it can go with a lot of things and I'm gonna show you a vetiver and rose combo here that I really like as well uh, later on. But those are kind of things that you would do. The other thing is you not only don't have to layer with um, uh, fragrances. You can do a lotion. Um, so lotion, uh, let's say for example you have a lotion from one fragrance and you like it and it's a maybe like a patchouli-esque uh, oak mossy kind of a intense woody fragrance and you've got a vanilla of perfume so you would apply the lotion first and you could smell that aroma of uh, oak moss woody notes or patchouli and then you apply the um, uh, vanilla on top and you get a great combo. So you don't always have to layer uh, fragrances with uh, fragrances. You can do lotions and other oils and things like that as well. But what, what I'm going to be talking to you most about is layering two different fragrances uh, mostly. Um, the other thing that the lotions could be helpful for, like sometimes when you go to a department store and they have these gift sets, it comes with a lotion. It's the same scent as the fragrance. Uh, that actually is perfect for intensifying the fragrance, making it last longer because you'll apply the lotion first and then spray that same fragrance on top. But that's another story for an another day for uh, making your fragrances last longer. But today, as I said, we're only talking about um, layering. Now I want to start off with one fragrance combo that I first started doing early on in this journey with uh, perfume reviewing and collecting and things like that. I always felt like that these two were a perfect uh, layering combo and it's uh, basically Creed's Aventus and uh, Creed's uh, Virgin Island Water. Um, so on their own they're great fragrances and I mean all of these fragrances and a lot of the fragrances you have are probably perfect on their own but if you want to stand out with a little twist or uniqueness and things like that then the layering comes in handy but these two are unique on their own I like them as they are but layered together it's almost like a pina colada cocktail where you have the pineapple and the citruses here and then you have the lime and the coconut here the the boozy quality and together you get a pina colada and it's a great great combo and this one I've been doing for quite a bit early on with my journey and um, I just felt like it was a great combo and Creed fragrances are easy to layer personally for me. They're not too deep and dense and rich and intense and heavy. And uh, uh, one key word I want to use is muddled. Like um, if you, some fragrances you wear act like they're muddled. Like there's just so much concentration and heft to them. You can't really see through them. A lot of the fragrances from Creed, you can see through them when you're wearing it. Now, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but the heaviness, the thickness of fragrances, uh, so thick and heavy the muddled thing comes into play and you can't see through them those kind of fragrances I don't recommend you layer with because they're so intense it's just really really hard these are the kind of fragrances that are easier to layer they're so transparent is a word um, you can see through them um, so those are the kind of fragrances that I like to layer because it's easier to layer now you can overpower um, 
a fragrance if you decide to wear uh, a layer something like let's say for a Frederick Mall a fragrance like um, Portrait of a Lady it's just so strong you wouldn't even put it to uh, with fragrances like this because it's just it's a, it's a great fragrance on its own to begin with but it's also so strong and concentrated that layering is kind of not easy you're gonna have to like compensate for like one spray of portrait of lady you'll have to spray a bunch of sprays of another fragrance to kind of like make a unique fragrance so i, I don't recommend layering uh, really really heavy fragrances muddled thick heavy dense fragrances go with the easier ones that are lighter and you can come up with unique um combinations and experimenting is key i mean go ahead and experiment but just keep that in the back of your mind that if you are going to do the very heavy intense fragrances it's going to be a lot more complicated than going with the easier ones and if you have a collection of joe malone's i would say start with those first if you have a collection of eau de colognes i would say start with those first those are cheaper uh, and easier to work with rather than the more intense and heavy fragrances anyway so um, that's uh, one little um, advice that i would take but the these two together are pretty awesome. If you have these two, try that, try that out because I like that about this too. And sometimes you don't want Aventus on its own and sometimes you don't want Virgin Island water on its own and the two, two together is like an island, uh, you're, you're sipping a pina colada on, on an island, uh, tropical island vacation. So that's a great combo. Here's another one that I've been doing a lot of um, layering with. Now a fragrance I reviewed several months ago with Ashley called Bois Mysterio, this one right here. I really love it on its own. It's a big bad boy. Really, really intense, woody, aromatic, cumin, citrus, uh, lots of uh, spices and laurel or bay leaf. Um, it, it's a great fragrance on its own, but I felt like, I wonder how this would be with rose. And I tried it with, um, Flo uh, uh, it's Rosa Absolute from um, Molten Brown. Um, a lighter, um, fresher rose with a jammy uh, rose on its own. So there's not a lot of things going on here except for that rose. It's quite a beautiful and jammy fresh rose. And with this one, it's a match made in heaven. The two together work so wonderfully together that almost goes to a place where it starts reminding me a little bit of uh, Portrait of a Lady without the clove and the spice, uh, uh, cinnamon spice that the portrait of a lady has, but this time with the spices of the cumin and uh, the um, bay leaves and things like that. So it's a unique take on that. And you can do that with a fresh rose like this with a more intense, um, uh, intense fragrance like this because I feel like rose is so complimenting of, um, it complements a lot of different notes. It's, it works great. Um, one more thing. Um, this one is from the house of um, Essential Parfums. Another fresh, big, bright, jammy, uh, sparkly rose. I think this also works great with this one, but I've been mostly doing the Rosa Absolute from um, Molten Brown, but this one I think would be another great combo because it's not a heavy, dense rose, plus it's bright and fresh and uh, sparkly, effervescent, and it works great with the sparkliness of the cumin in here. So those are... Uh, two combos that I really have been enjoying lately. But one I recently discovered that I really want to tell you guys about, the two Jo Malone fragrances that, um, it was an accidental discovery. I sprayed a little bit of on, um, and then I came back and then sprayed um, another one from the house. And I was like, Jesus, this is so amazing. So the two Jo Malone fragrances I'm talking about are Oud and Bergamot, this one, in their more heavier uh, collection, a little more concentrated collection of fragrances with orange blossom. So this is something that is definitely uh, one to try uh, concept wise with layering so more feminine take on a fragrance here with the orange blossom I absolutely love this orange blossom it smells like true authentic orange blossom but I find it to be definitely more feminine leaning it's got a more feminine um, experience but don't get me wrong I'm absolutely head over heels for this orange blossom in fact it reminds me of a garden full of orange trees that had just bloomed in the heat of the summer or not in the summer it's like a warm spring day and you're walking in that garden and you can smell those orange blossoms in the heat um, that's what it reminds me of very very authentic orange blossom probably the most authentic orange blossom experience ever um, so this is that but I find it to be a little feminine leaning but I've worn bottles of it like back in the eight and uh, not 80s but in the early 2000s uh, I was wearing this one so I picked up another one recently on a trip to London but what layered together with this one um, 
This is the oud and bergamot, and it's a complementing notes. You've got the citrus orange blossom here, and you've got bergamot here. And bergamot and orange blossom, they're citruses. They complement one another. And then it takes on the smokiness of the oud in here, because I find this oud to be smoky. Uh, it, takes it, it takes on that personality with the orange blossom. Then you're experiencing this very floral orange blossom note with smoky, woody touches and uh, the citruses in the background. But really, really awesome combo. It also kind of slightly hints at something like Baccarat Rouge. There's this sparkliness and crackling experience with the notes um, uh, that I get with Baccarat Rouge. And the combo of these two are amazing. So I think uh, one of the key ideas behind layering is if you have a fragrance that's a little feminine and you want to make it a little masculine, add a little more masculine woody notes and things like that to it and it would make it uh, a more masculine experience. But then again, you, if you have the opposite and you want to kind of like make it a little more unisex or go in a little bit feminine direction, then add the, uh, the same in reverse so that you can kind of like make a fragrance unique on its own. But then again, also something that makes it more masculine, something that makes it more feminine and uh, you can appreciate fragrances and ha you have these unique experiences, cocktails of perfumes that um, you're wearing. And sometimes people have not smelled those fragrances or at all because even though there's so many fragrances out there, the combo that you create is gonna be uh, unique on its own and it's gonna probably get uh, some attention. People might stop you and say, hey, what are you wearing? You smell great, all that good stuff. So that's, um, so that's a great idea for uh, thinking about layering. If you have um, uh, fragrances that lean too feminine and you wanna masculine them up a little bit, go add some woody touches or patchouli or oud or things like that and then the vice versa if you have too many of those and you want add some uh, more uh, you know not I don't want to say feminine touches because I don't like that idea because all fragrances are um, I think unisex to begin with uh, but there are more masculine notes and then there are more um, feminine notes and that's what you would actually do is do the reverse so that's a great idea for you to kind of like change up your um, a fragrance wearing experience and then come up with unique experiences with fragrances and unique smells as well. Going back to the idea of um, doing the clashing of fragrances of, of very heavy notes, I personally don't think that uh, combining two ouds together is a good idea. I just feel like those are so dense and um, uh, big experiences, very, very complex experiences that doing something in addition, unless you think it works. And sometimes you do it and it works great, but most of the time, the fragrance that's like really intense, deep, rich, heavy fragrance, on its own, it's fine, and layering it is not going to be something that you should do. But then again, um, once in a blue moon, you might find it, but personally for me, ouds together um, layered, it's gonna be very, very complicated, and nine out of 10 times, it's not going to work out and smell great. Now recently, uh, well, first of all, before I explain this layering combo, two fragrances that I think are perfect for layering are Molecule One and then Molecule Two. Now, Molecule One, I like it because it's ISOE Super. It smells a little bit like uh, cedarwood and sandalwood combined. And I find it to be a great backbone for fresher and floral fragrances, like lighter, more airy fragrances. And it would be great, great for you to spray this one on with a floral. And then for the um, Ambroxan and Molecule Two, um, you get more of like an aquatic, woody, uh, ozonic kind of an experience with um, layering this one on. So recently I picked up a fragrance from the house of Louis Vuitton called Curbatant, this one right here. Now this one to me it's a fruity watery aquatic pear with like tea-like nuances, uh, aquatic touches. It's definitely in line with the original uh, releases from Louis Vuitton because it reminds me of those. It's very fresh and refreshing, but I felt like it needed something. It needed a little bit of oomph to it. So I tried both of these as a layering combo and I would go with these two first. Anytime I'm layering uh, these two fragrances, I layer them first and then layer the uh, other fragrances. Like for this one, I tried the, I tried the, um, this one, Molecule 2, and then I tried uh, Molecule 1. I felt like Molecule 1 was the winner out of the two. Molecule 2 went into a little bit of a minty direction, and I don't know where this mintiness was coming from, but with Molecule 1, I felt like it was more grounded, 
uh, it really blended better with that uh, with um, Curbatant and it gave it a more of a woody experience whereas this one doesn't have any woody touches and now with the Molecule One it was uh, a great great fragrance so what I do I'm gonna show you a one that I'm going to layer in a minute but um, a couple more things I would also point out recently I had done a video about layering two fragrances from the house of uh, Nishane probably it's been a year already it's a uh, Hachivat and uh, hundred silent ways so these two layered together Amazing, one of the best uh, amazing layering combos. And, and this is where the rule of heavy intense fragrances doesn't apply because I find these to be both intensely heavy. This as a heavy freshy, uh, and this one as a heavy oriental, floral oriental. And this one is all about, I believe it's gardenias, or it could be tuberose and vanilla. Really, really sexy, um, gorgeous. A very very vanillic and this one is you know you know this one this is a fruity uh, oak mossy kind of a uh, woody uh, fragrance so most of the time I layer this one first and then I layer this one I've tried the opposite it hasn't worked as well as when I layer this one because I find them to be both intense this is a really intense freshy it's a very very long lasting freshy but with this uh, I think it works better when you layer it down with the vanillic floral um, fragrance and then spray the Hachivat on top and it's the most amazing layering combo it is to die for and the first time I smelled it it was on the Nishane guys themselves and I had to ask I said what are you wearing and I thought in the back of my mind it's a conference they're here it's probably spraying a ton of fragrances and they probably have a bunch of different fragrances on and he said no I'm, I only got these two I'm wearing them and I was chatting with them and I mentioned this in the video with the layering of these two and the wind was blowing at me uh, you know with him uh, in front of me and I, all I was getting was this really intoxicating and sexy uh, smell of these two together so these two even though they're both heavy they work well because this one is a heavy freshy this one is an oriental vanillic uh, floral and it works great those two together are phenomenal it's it's one of the best layering combo disco uh, discoveries for me so uh, uh, one more uh, to tell you about these two are the ones from Essential Parfums. This is Mont Vetiver and this is uh, Rose Magnetique. And I was just telling you a little bit about this one with uh, layering it with uh, Bois uh, Mysterio, this one. But these two together, wow, what a combo. And I never thought that Vetiver and Rose work together, but it does work. Even though this is a, a fresher take on Vetiver, the Mont Vetiver, I feel like it does get earthy and woody as it's drying down. And this Rose, as I mentioned, is a very fresh, uh, sparkly effervescent kind of rose more about the rose and not a lot else going on this one has a lot of citruses so the two together are pretty amazing and basically here's what I do I'm gonna show you what I do so I start out with the deeper richer heavier scent first and both of these are about the same but this one definitely has notes in it that are going to weigh it down so I spray that one first so this is a vetiver it's earthy woody and the rose is rose and as I was saying earlier rose is very universal you can do a lot with rose with as far as layering goes so first I do this I'm gonna do it three times of the Mont vetiver and then I'm smelling the smoky vetiver but it's fresh and then on top, I'm doing um, the Rose Magnetique. So what I get now is a beautiful rose. I want to wait a little bit because the, the rose is a little stronger um, because I just sprayed it. Now it's uh, definitely uh, a lot more of a combo. Uh, so I'm getting uh, the fresh rose, but it's become a lot deeper because the rose here is fresh on its own and it's a lot sparkly and effervescent, very sparkly. It's a very, very bright rose but sprayed on top of the vetiver now i'm getting a very woody um, earthy um, kind of um, green uh, rose but more uh, green earthy rather than green leaves and things like that because the the vetiver has this a pungent quality that uh, complements the beautiful effervescent rose in it so now i have a i don't know if you guys like vetiver but vetiver sometimes can smell a little like damp earth and so here it's dampened up the rose and brightened it up as well so rather than having a damp vetiver earth on you you have it with rose and it's actually if you thought that rose magnetique was a little feminine now the rose has actually become very masculine because 
now um, I've got more of a masculine kind of a um, experience with the, the vetiver because I find vetivers to be more on the masculine side and side and then rose to be on the feminine side even though I love both notes don't get me wrong I absolutely love them I feel that's how I experience these uh, notes but here as I was explaining earlier more feminine note and combine it with a masculine note and you have a kind of a very unisex experience this is still going a little masculine but there that rose is really really nicely blended with uh, the vetiver and now I have a vetiver and rose combo uh, from these two fragrances so uh, this is Mon Vetiver and this is Rose Magnetique. So these are also not so expensive and I don't mind layering with them. And that's another thing I, I forgot to mention, the price point of fragrances. Um, the simpler fra the fragrances, the easier to um, layer, the more complex, more expensive fragrances, the, the less you want to layer. That's just my opinion. You guys might be completely doing it differently. Um, again, this Louis Vuitton is more expensive, but it's a simpler fragrance and I feel like it's okay to do it with the molecules uh, to experience something. I might try something different with it. I might try a vetiver with it or maybe even a stronger woody note uh, type of a fragrance because I find this one to be very watery, liquidy. You experience the liquidy water in the notes. So the, the experience, the wearing experience is very liquidy. So I would probably experiment with that a little more. Maybe even try the Oud and Bergamot with the, the Curbatant. We'll see how that works together. But right now I'm really enjoying these two. Uh, very rosy vetiver, fresh but deep and rich. And now I'm obsessed with the combo of vetiver and uh, rose. I never thought that would work. It does work. I've seen it pop up in fragrances here and there. But uh, that's um, a new kind of a note uh, or fragrance style to, to play with. Anyway. Anyway, those are my thoughts on how to layer fragrances, guys. Uh, I don't know if you guys are into layering fragrances, but uh, let me know. Uh, also, I mean, I'm not really into a lot of layering, but as I said, I've been getting into it more and more and trying different layering combos. These are all also niche fragrances. I'm not, I don't try them with um, uh, designer fragrances. For some reason, I feel like they're more complicated. They're kind of like uh, already pretty done. Uh, and I haven't found any that I would layer together. Probably I would layer fragrances like uh, Sauvage and um, Bleu de Chanel. Those kind of fragrances might be easier because they don't have a lot going for them. And then you would combine them with something a little more complex. But I haven't really found interest in layering designer fragrances. Perhaps you guys might let me know about that. But anyway, let me know about layering fragrances. Do you like the idea? Do you hate the idea? Do you have any layering combos? with fragrances that you want to tell me about so I can discover them myself uh, since we're talking about it. And if you do, please put it down. Let me know what your thoughts are and what you like to do as far as layering goes. Other than that, if you guys want to send me a question about future videos I want to do uh, about various um, topics on fragrances, do send that uh, to lfsgquestions at gmail.com so that I can, uh, you know, look at the, the questions and see if there's enough material to do a whole video about. And if I don't find enough material, I might do a big long video, like an hours long video with like multiple questions we can talk about uh, in the future. But for now, let's stick to the s shorter videos, even though these videos are pretty long. Some of you were complaining that these videos were too long, but a lot of you love watching the longer videos and there's a lot of detail here to cover. So we'll continue doing it the way it is. Again, lfsgquestions at gmail.com for any questions you might have. And if you want to pick up a hat, as I said, manlovescologne at gmail.com. Uh, it's $40 shipped USA. Uh, friends of family, or you can send me a, a regular payment with um, uh, paying the difference as far, as far as what the PayPal charges. And if you want it internationally, uh, it's $45 uh, friends and family. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.